The following video recording has been made possible by Symbotic, Complete Warehouse Automation. From integrated supply chain consulting to fully automated picking systems with progressive financial models. Symbotic systems are deployed in major grocery, retail, and general merchandise operations throughout North America. Learn more at Symbotic.com. And by Duchin Productions. Broadcast corporate and web video production services specializing in science and technology. Start the conversation today. Visit DuchinProductions.com to learn how video can get your business the customers, talent, and investors you've been looking for. So I'm uh, Whitney Crooks. I'm a PhD student at Tufts. I work in the Center for Engineering Education and Outreach, and I'm going to give you an overview of um, some of the different robotics projects that we have going on at Tufts. Um, first up, we have educational robotics, and um, this is mainly uh, work done by Professor Ethan Danahy um, at the CEEO. Um, some of our, our kind of um, main philosophies at the CEEO are to think about um, ways to empower both teachers and students. Um, so thinking about tools and tool sets that allow young kids to get engaged in engineering early. Um, we also think about how we can propose robotics challenges and competitions um, to teachers and students um, to show that um, to kind of break them out of the stereotypical views of robotics, which are, um, you know, building a car that drives forward or building a sumo robot to, to push other robots out of a, a circle. Um, so these are some examples from the freshman year robotics um, class that Ethan teaches. Um, so they were tasked with building a robotic zoo, and they were given um, an EV3 kit and um, lab view, and they've come up with a pretty diverse range of solutions. You have an alligator that opens and closes its jaw. Um, you have some octopus, an octopus, a penguin, and a turtle, um, and then one of them built a sloth, so it actually moves along a wire. Um, and I'm not sure how well all of you can see it, um, but the elephant at the bottom is actually using the wheels as feet um, and the motors are actuating the legs um, and so we're also looking at online communities um, so how can we um, support people not only in the Massachusetts area um, but all across the country and the world um, so we have the Lego engineering community where people can create and share Lego related projects um, and then Professor Danny, he has um, his Dr. E's We Do Challenges and Dr. E's Mindstorms Challenges. Um, so we actually ran that same robotic zoo concept um, on Dr. E's Mindstorm Challenges and had students from all across the world um, participating. They made a video of their robot, shared it online, and then the students voted, and the winner got a um, little Lego block sent to them with their name um, on it. Um, we're also uh, looking at um, not only um, supporting um, ch or like s children in schools, but also how do we um, support children with special needs. Um, so one of our master students is looking at how do you modify Pleo, which is this um, pet-like dinosaur that you take care of. Um, how do you how do you modify Pleo so that um, and then present it to students with autism um, as a client in the engineering design process. Um, so Plio is your new pet, and maybe you need to build Plio um, a house to live in or a bed to sleep on um, and get these kids interacting with each other and study how um, you know, an intervention like Plio um, can affect their, their relationships with each other and, and their relationships uh, with this robot. <laughs> Um, we also have some work by Chris Rogers at the CEO. Um, so in uh, the simple robotics, or the um, advanced robotics class that he's teaching this semester, um, we're using this MyReal robotics kit that several undergrads developed this summer. Um, you can think of it like a Lego um, kit, but for college age students. Um, it uses a wider variety of sensors. Um, you can attach motor drivers to a breadboard and plug them into a my Rio. Um, currently, um, they actually demoed it this morning. It was pretty cool. Um, they are their final project is to create robots that paint a picture of uh, the dean of our art school. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. They're looking a little abstract today, um, but someone was able to uh, print out Mario in pointillism. So no, pretty cool. Uh, if anyone's around Tufts next week, 
um, and wants to come check them out. Um, we also have some acoustics robotics work that we're doing. Um, so this is a master's student who is developing a robot um, to perform an ASTM FFIC test. Um, that is um, basically a test that checks the insulation um, between the ceiling and floors. Um, pretty much so you can't hear your noisy neighbor upstairs. Um, so this is a robot that would go around um, and tap on the floor at the different locations um, shown in that diagram. And this is our Lego prototype. We like to prototype a lot of things with Lego because it's fast and easy. Um, we are also um, doing work on a robotic drummer for Zildjian um, to test the quality of cymbals, um, and also a robotic violin player to test the quality of violins. Um, and we have also done some work on ROS for um, LabVIEW software. Um, so switching gears a little bit, um, we have some work on autonomous aerial robotics, um, kind of similar um, to what Chris Omada was talking about. Um, this is work by Usman Khan um, in um, ele electrical engineering. Um, he is about um, 14 grad students of about 30 undergrads uh, working on projects like this one. Um, so this is a drone that flies to different positions based on these um, QR codes that you see on the posts. Um, so the robot flies up to it, um, um, senses it with a camera, and then flies to its next position. Um, so you should see it kind of fly off in a second. Um, so it's able to move about the room and navigate the space um, just based on this camera and tag system. Um, um, he is also looking at aerial flying formation um, and synchronous maneuvers over networks. Um, so they have a bunch of quadcopters here. Um, and in a minute, you'll see them kind of fail a little bit, but in a minute they should actually get up and start um, dancing together. Um, they can control them over Wi-Fi um, or also an ad hoc information exchange between the robots themselves. Um, so they should, they should actually start dancing. Just a minute. Um, yeah, let's see where they go. Um, we actually tried to do this with a robotics class last year. We had a, a Lego controller um, controlling quadcopters like this, um, but Usman Khan did a much better job than, than we did in our class last year. <laughs> Um, and so finally, uh, we have some work on soft robotics um, headed by Barry Trimmer um, in the biology department. Um, this past spring, we took three different robots to a robotics challenge in Italy. Um, two of the robots completed in a terrestrial challenge where they had to move over and through obstacles. Um, and one robot completed in a manipulation challenge where they had to pick and place objects and move in between obstacles. Um, so the first robot is the schema bot, uh, which we have at our table outside. Uh, it's a squishable motor actuated robot. You can see it moving in the bottom. Um, the, the robot was inspired by the caterpillar, um, specifically the Manduca sexta. Um, it's the tobacco moth larva. Um, it has a foam body. Um, it's highly deformable. Um, I was told they dropped it and it's all fine. Um, it flew on a plane, made it to Italy. Um, the head and the tail are 3D printed. Um, there are slots for each motor um, to stick in, and then the tendons uh, run through the robot. Um, so if you want to play around with it, it is outside. Um, the next robot that we took uh, was Slabbot. Slabbot. Um, so literally just a slab of foam um, with a motor on each end and some tendons running through it. Um, this is kind of an experiment in um, in kind of soft robotics and um, motor tendon arrangements in soft robotics. Um, so by putting the motors and the tendons at different places in the robot, they're able to get um, different types of motion. Um, so you can see it crawling on the left um, and turning around on the right. Um, and um, it uses kind of a, a variable friction mechanism to move, so it actually kind of builds up up friction and then um, releases that to propel itself forward. Um, and the last robot that was taken um, was part of my dissertation work um, on a teleoperable in-home robotic assistant. Uh, we took our 3D printed gripper um, 
attached to a, a different arm and um, and use that. Uh, the grippers 3D printed on a multi-material printer. Um, it's composed of both hard and soft parts. Um, and the, it's based on the, the Festo gripper. Um, the idea is, is that when you um, go to grasp an object, um, parts of the gripper um, collapse and actually conform around the object. Um, and then we're um, attaching it to a modular pneumatically driven arm. Um, so the arm has three chambers to control the motion, so that's the elongation and the bending, and three chambers to control stiffness uh, with granular jamming. Um, so that's kind of similar if you guys have seen the universal universal jammer, it's um, you know, filled with coffee grounds, and when you apply a vacuum, um, it actually stiffens and is able to pick something up. Um, so here, instead of using it to pick something up, we're using it to create stiffness. Um, and we also have another student working on a similar uh, gripper design. Um, unlike mine, though, his is a passive gripper. Um, caterpillars are actually passive grippers. When they're gripping onto a branch or a leaf, um, they actually aren't exerting any force like you or I would when we grip onto something. Um, so the way that his robot works is you actually have to um, apply a force to uh, release it. Um, so his eventual goal is to get this robot cl crawling um, up a branch. Um, there's a couple other people doing robotics work. Um, we have one student doing a, creating a desktop crane. Um, so with people who uh, work at a desk but with heavy parts, they can move them around. And we have another student who's developed a robotic mechanism for testing fatigue in a mouse knee. Um, the goal is to better understand um, joint failure in the knee. Um, so studying it with the mouse knee as a model. 